Wow. Are we on step five already? Okay, I have my worksheet. Do you have yours? That's important. Important. Let's start off with just reviewing the first start of the song. Here we go. Are we going to sing together? That's a fun thing, right? Um, you don't have to do it out in front of other people, but it's a fun thing. We should be having fun. Here we go. I think we're going. Let's see if I can get it to play. Bum, 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 puff. Oops, not yet. Almost, almost. <laughs> puff, the magic dragon, lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist. It's hard to see. Called Hana Lee. Little Jackie Paper loved that rascal Puff and brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff. Oh, Puff the Magic Dragon. Are you tired of the song yet? Okay. Um, we are on step five. Step three, we filled in the missing words and we found that we could remember a lot of words. It was like um, a song memory that you didn't remember the words individually, but within context, within whenever you heard the sentence, you could finish the sentence. Now we're going to do something that's a memory trick. We are going to create crazy, funny pictures with the words. And this is called mnemonics, M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C-S, I think. But we're going to, well, you're going to see. All right, so let's look at step five. We have blanks and we've taken random words, nouns and adjectives, the only thing we're looking for, and it should be completely out of the blue. No order, you don't have to try to make sense. Some people like to make funny stories, but for our purposes, I think it is better if you just come up with a random list of things, a spoon, a house, blue, uh, crayon, pencil, um, dog, um, baby, poop, whatever, okay? So now here it is now. We have puff. Let me get a highlighter, see if that helps you guys. And let me get a color. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> puff. The red banana. Hmm. Lived by the flower and frolicked in the autumn spoon in a dog called Hana Lee. Little Jackie Paper loved that rascal Puff and brought him houses and feet powder and other fancy stuff. Oh, Puff the Magic Calendar lived by the bottle and frolicked in the autumn dirt in a land called Hanali. Puff the Magic Dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a pants called Hanali. All right, now... Remember the very first step, we tried to imagine the story in our mind because we want to try to live in the English, make it an experience, something that we, well, <laughs> let's just keep going. All right, so here we go. Puff the red banana. <laughs> I can see a humongous red banana. I think they call it a different name, but there is such thing as a red banana. But anyway, um, it, it actually is a walking red banana. Lived by the flower. Oh, he liked to hang out in flower patches. I'm thinking yellow flowers. And the flowers have smiles on their faces. Frolicked in the autumn spoon. Hmm, what would an autumn spoon look like? Well, I suppose it changes colors. It's a tarnished spoon. Then A spoon in this story goes through seasons just like trees. In a dog called Hanali. So, this is actually inside of a dog. Now, that is a weird picture. Uh, little Jackie Paper loved that rascal Puff and brought him houses. It must be a big banana because he'd bring him a house. I can see him walking up with the house, pulling it behind him. And foot powder. What in the world a banana needs foot powder for? I don't know, but I see it. And he's sprinkling it on the feet of this big red banana. Okay. Um, you would complete this and tell your story to yourself, maybe to a friend, maybe come to a class and tell it.
But once again, we're trying to put ourselves into the world of English. Words are not meant to be marks on a piece of paper. Words are to, to share experience. And when we just create one definition, one meaning for one word, connected in our brain, we have one neural path that connects it. Something like this. It really shakes things up and really shocks our brain to try to grasp it. As long as it's in story, we can get past those left brain filters and we can experience the words, the phrases, the sentences, the storyline in a whole new way. It's kind of like shaking the world up and saying, hey, there's other ways we can use this. And that's what the words are for. Words are feelings and emotions, ideas. They are not writings on a piece of paper for a test. And so the more connections we make, the crazier connections we make, the more range we're going to have with words. Most of you in your traditional system are sub-translating. Uh, chi chow means dog. Dog can mean so many things. Therefore, if we really mix it up, we're not allowing our brain to force it only one way. It becomes a real tool that I can say, you are a dog. I know you're not a dog, but that means something. Um, it was a dog day. Uh, uh, I feel dog happy today. Who knows what that means? But words are a color palette. They are not a scientific formula, a dictionary. Words have meanings, and the meanings are part of us. So we need to shake it up, and this is how we do it in step five. All right, that's it. How do I turn this off? I know I've got a button somewhere. Oh, there it is. Here's my remote control. I'm going to stop now.